Good morning. Uh, start with a reading from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A farmer scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head, and soon the grain is ripe, and so he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Now, I like to consider myself to be of reasonable intelligence, but I will admit that I am baffled by a lot of things. Uh, for example, the technology of music or other recordings. Essentially, someone speaks or sings, and that sound travels into a microphone, which turns that sound into some sort of electrical signal. Then that signal travels through wires to somewhere, and it is recorded onto something so that it can be accessed later and played for all to hear. Perhaps this gets recorded on a computer or other such advice, where the sound is converted into some sort of digital digital signal and then goes through circuits in a processor and then some sort of memory storage. And there it remains, existing only as a series of code and numbers until the computer turns around and reads that code and turns it back into the sound that was recorded in the first place. So I'm essentially saying I have no idea how it is that you today are hearing this sermon. <laughs> um, but uh, as hard as digital um, recording is for me to understand, it, it, it isn't as hard for me to wrap my head around as our compact discs, um, you know, CDs, DVDs. Um, they don't make any sense to me. So we took something like a song that someone was singing or a, a movie and put it on a metallic uh plastic disc by shooting a laser at it to record notes and voices. Um, and so that laser burns uh, little holes into that uh, disc, I think. And then, uh, and then we take a machine and shoot a different laser at the disc and then use the reflection of the laser bouncing off the disc to understand what's on the disc and turn it back into music and send it to a speaker. I mean, I look at a disc and I say, ooh, shiny, I can see myself. And a tiny laser looks at the discs and says, at the disc and says, ooh, music. I don't see the music. I, I don't know if I I don't know if I'm just not as smart as a CD player, apparently. Uh, then again, I don't understand cassette tapes a whole lot better. Um, I had to look this up to get an idea of how these things work, but it's a magnetized strip of tape running across a device um, where the sound that is being recorded is turned into an electrical signal which that signal becomes an electrical field which then realigns the electrical particles on the tape um, and those particles newly realigned in formation now contain the information of a song I mean, I like magnets. They hold things on the fridge, but apparently they also sing, or at least they used to back when we still had cassette tapes. Now, there are a lot of things going on this world in this world that I don't understand, and things much bigger than how my music is stored. I mean, many things are um, interesting and complicated, but bear no real weight in the greater questions that arise out of life and and those are the ones that that I suppose keep me up at night um, when I worry about those things and don't understand those things life is complicated and we go through it with a lot of unanswered questions now some of those questions we can make sense of and others not so much there are things that are hard to reconcile or find peace in. Things within our own bodies, uh, within our community, in the place where we live, or in the globe, or even the universe that we don't understand. 
so many challenges to consider, challenges to health and well-being, to our life and existence, to our hearts and our relationships with the world around us. So much that happens around us all the time that we just, I don't know, feel out of control at times. I don't like that feeling. And so in the middle of that, how do we trust what's going to happen next? How do we trust God to provide or heal or give us peace? How do we figure out where God is even at? How do we understand the great mysteries of God's kingdom? How do we feel less like things are out of control? Jesus talks about how the kingdom of God is like a farmer who plants seed in a field. In the spring, farmers go out with their cedars and work in the fields to plant crops. The, the way farming happens now, everyone, everything is very precise. Um, speaking of technology that I don't quite understand, I mean, genetically, the seeds that go into the field are carefully selected and are pretty uniform and identical. All seeds are planted at a uniform depth using the equipment and technology we have. Fertilizer is measured and applied as well. We're actually really efficient and productive with modern farming. It's, it's amazing. Whatever can be controlled is controlled. But even in Jesus' time, there's quite a bit of thought and wisdom that went into farming. Practices, even at that time, were based on the wisdom of years and generations worth of experience insights that were passed down, practices adapted for conditions. Um, the ancient farmer th also thought about the soil and the sun and the shade and the rain, um, thought about seed depth and things like that. I mean, whatever could be controlled at that time even was controlled. So um, even with the addition of technology and equipment and advances in science of genetics and soil chemistry, there's still an important element of farming uh, that relies on something outside of anything that we can control. The crop still needs sunshine and rain, and it needs it at opportune times. The crop needs for it not to hail or for the wind to be too harsh. Even with everything we do to ensure production, even with every control we put into place, we still have to rely on God for the growth. And as Jesus says, that's how the kingdom of God works. In our lives, in all other things, we have to trust in God, in health and healing, in conflict and peace, in living next to our neighbors, in raising kids, and just in living, breathing, and in all other things, an element of life that, where we just have to turn over trust to God. We can work and labor and do what we can to make sense of the world, um, to understand how things work, to control the things we can control. And we, we have those opportunities and we do very well at that. Um, we, um, we can work to bring peace to our lives, to find healing. But we also have to place our trust in God. And, and that's hard. Um, we want to be in control. We want to know what is and what is to come. And we'd love to say that Jesus does this for us, that he gives us clarity and control of the ability to fix everything in the world in our favor. That's not how it works. What Jesus invites us to um, is not some sort of certainty and perfect answers for all my questions and concerns. But rather, Jesus invites me into faith, into trust. Instead of providing answers to everything, Jesus invites me to trust the one who loves me more than I could ever imagine. Again, trust is hard. But if I have to trust someone, let it be the one who loves me, who calls me by name, and who would give everything for me. Amen.